Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona market. Going to arm you with numbers and information so that not only you can be well equipped, but you'll be a hit at all the cocktail parties. When somebody says, do you see what's going on in the real estate market? You're right there. Now, they may leave you alone in the corner for the rest of the evening, but you'll have your shining moment. You've heard that saying, don't fight the Fed when it comes to the Federal Reserve. And then now in real estate, don't fight the trend. So in the Federal Reserve, when they launched quantitative easing, they were making money easier to get for everybody to keep the economy on even footing. And you can see here when you look at their asset purchases that uh, in 2008, when we had that debacle, they started making more asset purchases and they continued the easy money policy all the way through today. And that's why you see an increase in the stock market and an increase in housing. It always goes to equities and assets when the money is out there. Then you end up with too much money chasing too few goods. Now the press is out there now saying, and the Fed is saying that they're going to be pulling back on their asset purchases. But right now we don't know how fast. They're saying maybe $95 billion, um, a month. But as you can see, they have pulled back, but it's barely noticeable. So they haven't really slapped it to us yet. Right now it's just chatter. And the chatter combined with them raising the overnight rate by 50 basis points is why we're looking at a 5.25 interest rate right now for mortgages. How high are they going to go? I'm a, if I'm a betting man, when I look at the trend, I'm saying they're going to go higher. Uh, but I don't know how high. And anybody that does, uh, even the Federal Reserve doesn't know. So um, they're just guessing. And I don't, I don't like to guess. Um, I also don't like to say there's a crash until I see the numbers that say there's a crash. Right now, the numbers are trending down, and I'm going to show you the ones to show you how fast they're going down. But um, they could go down and level out, or they could blow right past that, and we could have a problem. At that point, if it looks like we're going to blow past some key metrics, then I'll tell you. So we have to follow this over time so that there's no surprises. Because if you're trying to buy, you're sitting back now, and you're going, man, do I wait? Are prices going to come down, or are they just going to stabilize? And then you have to weigh that with, yeah, but what will the interest rate be then? So there's a lot of unanswered questions. But if you're in a position now where you can buy um, and you can afford the price range that you're looking at, you now have more choices. You have more choices because there's a lot more inventory out there right now. Sales have, have dipped uh, about 11% and inventory has in increased about 92% versus last year. So you don't need to write that contract that has appraisal gap language in it. And if you do, and if somebody tells you you do, then just get in the car and go look at the next house because uh, that seller doesn't get it. They don't realize what's going on in the market. Now, for sellers, there's some key metrics that you need to look at here and buyers that show you the trend is our friend until the end, right? Isn't that, uh, what is that YouTuber that says that all the time? Johnny Bravo. We're, inventory is creeping up. It's about ready to, it's probably as of the middle of the week, we've blown past 2020 levels, which remember, we're still really low so we're at about 10,100 10,400 I think today and uh, a balanced market's considered about 27,000 so we we have a long trip but we're getting there quickly the other thing is look at the prices now the average list price per square foot you know this is what people are asking for their homes and they started asking too much and now they're having to start getting closer to reality so the list prices the asking price is starting to trend down and you can see it here because here's the listing success rate the people that priced too high didn't fare too well so they had to pull it back so that's a pretty obvious sign that you are not in a position as a seller to get aggressive that that is in the rear view mirror and here's the contract ratio look at how that dropped you get down to a contract ratio below 60 it's considered a balanced market Below 30 is considered a cold market. That's where we were during the big crash time. So is this number going to blow past the balance market? Well, when it does, uh, I'll certainly tell you. We'll see it here, right? And that's a that's a big indicator. But it's a it's an indicator that we'll see before we hit that balance market. How fast are we getting there? This chart's turning. It's a trend. Don't fight the trend. When you're going to price your house, don't pull up Zillow and think, that's my number. Because that's historical data. Zillow looks at the sale last month, month before that, the month before that, and they may even go back as far months, as far as four months, and then look at the data within one mile of your house, run it through their little algorithm, and spit out a number. 
Well, it doesn't take into consideration whether the market is going up or whether it's going down. Now, we still have prices for sale prices are still increasing, although that rate of increase is starting to slow. We aren't seeing the rate of increase turn into a negative number as of yet. But if you price at these algorithms that you see online, you're going to be very disappointed because it's going on past history. Your neighbor got this price. Your other neighbor got that price. But when they got that price, there weren't as many homes for sale. There weren't as many choices. And interest rates weren't as high as they are today. So how much can you hang your hat on those numbers? Not much. It's a guide. And you have to look at pricing your home and understand what a market price is. A market price is not what your agent picks. A market price is what the buyers are telling you they're going to pay for your home. And right now the buyers are saying, I'm a little cautious, so don't get over aggressive on me. That's what the market is today. Buyers are savvy and they look and they go, we know that all the metrics are going down. Uh, I don't see a crash. Some, some buyers are nervous. They're staying out of it. Staying out of it until they wait to see how this stuff shakes out because there's a lot of headwinds out there. There's a lot of things in the way, uh, but it could all break loose. Everything kind of starts skating back to normal. That's the optimistic part of me. And the pessimistic part says, oh, boy, buckle up. So we don't know. But when you're pricing, if you have to sell, the worst thing you can do is to rely on an algorithm such as Zillow's and go, there's the amount. That's it. Um, because you're going to be so far off, it's going to be painful. Remember, that's how they lost over $600 million in one quarter, because they personally went out and bought houses based on that number that they spit out. And then they wanted to fix them up and sell them. They had two problems. One, they paid way too high for the home, so they eroded any chance of a profit there. And number two, they couldn't find the material of the people. They bought too many homes, so they ended up dumping them, and they lost well over $600 million. Now, Where's the best way to get an estimate on your house? You just have to comp it house by house in your neighborhood with your real estate agent. Or if you have access to uh, the data, take a look at it. I mean, you can get that on just about any any website. You can look at it on Zillow and you can look at who sold within uh, one mile of your house. Or you can look on Redfin. Uh, you can look on just about anybody's website. I even have a value calculator on mine, but I don't recommend it because it's, it's not accurate. None of them are. So you have to look at the house and go, oh, that's... Julian Ted's house down the street and uh, it's about the same as mine and it's sold in March which means that the contract was written in February when the market was a lot better so you can't price it the same as theirs you might be close but you have to understand they probably had 30 people come through it in one weekend and got five offers so now you're going to take a couple weeks maybe a couple months to sell your home depending on this inventory number and how much it grows so you've got to be really smart about your pricing now we're up about 50 percent over two years so it's not like you're shooting yourself in the foot if you have to pull the house price down you have to lower your expectations and that's what's really hard for sellers in this market we're we for two years we've seen that houses are get, getting bids over bids, they're waiving inspections, they're putting in appraisal gaps, they're not even asking me to fix anything, they don't want a home warranty, I can get whatever I want for this house, if I price it too low, they'll bid me up, well that's starting to turn, we're still seeing multiple offers in some price points in some neighborhoods, so don't get me wrong, it's still out there, although it's slowing, so I'm saying, so when you're pricing your home, watch the trends, and don't fight the trend, because if you fight the trend, you're going to end up with that house sitting on the market far longer than you want it to. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, shoot me an email. Rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.